Hey guys, it's Kelly, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing a tutorial on this eye look right here. So I wanted to film this video because I have had an overwhelming number of requests to do tutorials on a lot of the looks that I've done recently. Specifically, these three looks right here, I've had just so many requests to do tutorials on them. But I used the exact same technique in all three of these, so I felt like if I did three separate tutorials with these looks, it would get very repetitive and it wouldn't necessarily be, it would just be too repetitive, it wouldn't be helpful. So what I wanted to do was come on camera today and share with you the same technique that I used and then kind of break down which colors I placed where in each of these looks so that you would understand how to recreate the technique. But if you wanted to do exactly what I did, I would share that at the end. So I don't know if I'm doing the best job explaining this. I hope that makes sense, but if you'd like to see a tutorial on this look, stay tuned. All right, so for this look, I've already prepped my eyes. I've laid down a base. I have used just my ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I did not set this, because if you watched my video about makeup tips I wish I learned sooner, one that I shared was that I don't always like to set down my eyeshadow base on the days that I'm going for a very bold look and I want the colors to pop. So for this look, I'm gonna start off with a dark shade right in my crease, and I know that sounds backwards, and we're always told to start with a light shade, but when I'm working with colorful shadows, I like to do it this way. So the shade is called Poodle, it's a hot pink, and I'm just gonna push that right into the crease. If I didn't mention it, that brush was the Dome Utility E34 from Sigma. So now I'm gonna go in with a slightly lighter shade. This is the color Soft Core from ColourPop, and I'm gonna use this to blend that out. So I kept that first color pretty tight in my crease, and I'm gonna use this to blend upwards, and I'm gonna take it on a big fluffy brush. This is the Sigma E38. So I wanted to use something even darker than the two pinks that I've used so we can add a little bit more dimension, but I wanted to keep the color in the same color family as like the pinky purple look. So I grabbed this shade, it's 143 from ColourPop. It's a really vibrant purple, and I'm gonna take this on a brush, kind of like if the two brushes I've used before had a baby, it would be this one. This doesn't have a name on the barrel, but it's from IBY. It's a, kind of like a, a crease brush that's short and kind of dense. So I'm gonna take this and just start going back and forth over the crease. Then I'm going back to the E38. I haven't added anything new to this brush. I'm just gonna take it and lightly dust over the edges so everything looks diffused. But now I'm using that same purple and just tapping it into the outer third of my lid. And then every time I'm just going back and blending the edges. All right, now for the fun part, but also I know the scary part for a lot of people, we're going to cut the crease. And I'm gonna to try to talk this through very slowly, give lots of help. So what I'm using is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. Just any concealer that you have, kind of, I prefer a slightly more liquidy concealer as opposed to a very thick concealer, but the brush that I like to use is the Small Smudge Brush. It's $3 from e.l.f. If you don't have this, just make sure you use any brush that's pretty tiny and precise and flat. I used to try to use, where do I have it? I used to always try and use this brush, it's the small concealer from Wet n Wild, and I struggled because this is too fluffy and flexible to use because I don't have as much control. So try something small where you have a lot of control, and I just take a little bit of concealer right on the tip of the brush. Now there's not necessarily a right or wrong way to do this, but what I like to do is pat that product that I just picked up, pat it down right there on the inner corner, Kind of draw it out. And now I put a decent amount right there so that I can look up and have a little bit of stamping going on. So if it doesn't stamp in your crease, I draw a little bit more. Look up and then you'll see it kind of stamps an outline for you. So then I go back through, use the edge of my brush, or what am I, the tip of the brush, and use that to draw the line. and then kind of decide which shape I want. Again, there's no right or wrong here, so you can have it 
go way above your way up above your crease you can have it more in your crease my eyes are slightly hooded so I like to go above my crease because otherwise if I looked forward it would just be hidden Now you can bring this over as far as you want. You can bring it all the way down, you can do it half, you can do it two thirds. I like to bring it just slightly past halfway and just kind of drag the product out and let it naturally fade. Or you can take the pad of your finger and blend it out so you get a really natural fade. Either one works. Okay, now I have that done and they honestly didn't turn out perfectly even but that is okay, do not worry about it because we're gonna do a little trick later on to kind of make them look even. So now I'm gonna take the shadow that I wanna put in this new cutout area and I wanna use the shade La Playa from ColourPop. So it might be showing up more like a silvery cream shade on camera, but it's actually a shimmery mint green. So I'm taking this on my Wet n Wild small concealer brush, picking some of this up and pushing it into the inner portion of this cut crease. Now this is a color that requires some building so if you are using this exact same shade don't be afraid to sit there take your time layer it up if you need to spray your brush go ahead and do that I just didn't bring any spray over here so I'm not going to worry about it. So I was originally thinking I was going to take that green through the whole cut crease but the more I looked at this I thought you know that would be really cool if I used a blue. So I'm actually going to break into the Masquerade palette from Juvia's Place and take the color Zola and fill in that center portion. You could definitely do this look with just the green and fill the whole thing in with the green. Either thing would be pretty, but I thought this would give the look even more dimension. I love that. That looks so cool. So basically I'm just taking the blue and filling in that empty space and then I'm packing anything left on my brush and just pulling that from the green into the blue so they kind of fade nicely. Now, if you can see, this cut crease is so much cleaner and more even, and this one's a little bit messy, but don't worry, we're gonna do our best to clean that up in a second here. Since I do have this palette out, I'm gonna take this purple shade Zobo, take it on the same brush that I use the color 143 with, and just deepen that color up. Again, you don't need to do this, but I just want to kind of darken up that outer third. Now I'm going to take whatever's on my brush and just run it up into the crease a little bit, just the outer portion of the crease. And then I'm just doing small circles. Sorry, blue is like getting into something up there. I'm just going to do small circles around here, just with the absolute lightest pressure ever, just to kind of blend that out to the edges. All right, so I finished up all these shadows on my lid, and I'm gonna go in and clean up the cut crease with some glitter. So I'm using the Stila Glitter and Glow in the shade Smoldering Satin, and I'm gonna take a little bit on the same e.l.f. brush that we used to cut our crease, and I'm just gonna go ahead and line the cut crease. So that is what it looks like now. As you can see, the glitter really cleans it up. I mean, this eye was pretty clean, but this eye, wasn't as sharp and I feel like the glitter really helps. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go finish off my face, apply some mascara, do the under eye. I'm not gonna do anything really to the under eye except for maybe take whatever purple is left on this brush, smudge it under there. I might throw in like a colored liner on the waterline but I'm not gonna do anything crazy there. So I will be right back to share with you guys the color combos I used in my other looks last week. All right, so I'm back. I've gone ahead and finished off my makeup. I just did my foundation and concealer, all that stuff. And then my lip color, if you're wondering, I added the shade Backtalk from Urban Decay. And then I quickly did my lower lash line. It was so easy. I just smoked out the rest of the purple that was on the brush underneath. And then I used two different blue eyeliners. I used the shade Prance from ColourPop, which is a pastel blue on the inner half. And then on the outer half, I used a royal blue from Koki. So now that we've done kind of the demo slash tutorial portion, I want to do a little breakdown right now for each of the eye looks that I've had requests for to share with you guys exactly what I used. So keep in mind, I'm, what am I trying to say? I use the exact same technique that I just shared with you guys for all of these looks, but first let's start off with this look. For that one, the shade that I started with in the crease was Making Moves, which is this kind of pink salmon-y color from ColourPop. 
And then I blended it out with this lighter orange. This shade is called I Owe You. It's also from ColourPop. And to deepen up the outer third of the eye, I used the shade 143, which is the same purple that we used today. And then I cut the crease just like I did today. And the blue shimmer that I used on the very inner portion was the shade of Beam Me Up from ColourPop. And then on the middle or the center of the lid, I used the, sh the shade Baseline from ColourPop. And then with this look, I used the same technique of the glitter, but I used the shade Pure Intentions from the Wet n Wild Gothographic Collection. This is just one of their liquid eyeshadows. All right, for this next look, I dipped into quite a few different palettes. So the first one that I used was this Glitz and Glamour Clutch. This was limited edition from Butter London from a while ago. And I used, I want, I'm pretty positive. I used this dark purple shade right here in my crease first. It might have been a different purple from another palette. Actually, it was. Now that I think about it, it was actually this purple from the Studio Makeup On The Go Cool Down Palette. I used that purple, but I blended it out with the purple from the Butter London Palette, which was this lighter purple and then cut the crease just like I did on the other video or in the tutorial today. I used the same green that I used today on the inner corner, which is the shade La Playa. And then for the center of the lid and to darken, I used the shade Makita from the Juvia's Place Masquerade palette. And then I used the smoldering satin glitter that I used today to define the cut crease. And the final one that you guys really wanted to see was this look right here. I used the Deuce palette for that one. The first shade that I laid down was the shade Custard, which is the purple in the palette. And then I smoked that out with the pink shade called Cream. Went ahead and cut the crease. And the shade that I used on the cut crease portion was this duochrome right here called Tarte. And then I just deepened up the outer third with the shade Custard, mixed in with a little bit of the brown called Chocolate. And then for this one, I didn't use any glitter to cut the crease, but I actually tried, and this didn't totally work, but I tried using an eyeliner to try to define it some more. Now this isn't a liquid liner, but I feel like it, the color of it matched really nicely. So I tried to just draw this out and I feel like it kind of helped me define the line a little bit more, but you, do have, you definitely don't need to do this step. But it's the shade Heartless from Urban Decay. It's kind of that metallic pink. But there you have a little breakdown on how I achieved all three of these looks. Plus you got a bonus look with this video that I, what am I trying to say? The makeup tutorial that we shared in the beginning. I really hope that this was helpful for those of you who have been requesting these looks. And even if you haven't, but you've kind of been curious how to achieve a similar look, I hope that this helps you and inspires you. If you enjoyed this, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you want me to keep doing more kind of tutorial type videos, let me know. Leave me a comment down below. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.